QRadar version 7.4.1 is now available in AWS. This actually performs the installation and as I go along I will be telling you the things that are particularly new here in this version. So if you search here for QRadar you're going to find the previous versions, the one I did videos on before and if you scroll down that's the version that you don't bring your own license but you actually can buy it from from the store and uh, and we're going to be installing a console. The installation process is very similar if you're going to be doing a managed host and an app host. But let's actually go ahead and do the actual console. Now when you go in here before you click uh, to subscribe it is important for you to read the documentation. Uh, and you need to know, for example, which region you're going to be selecting. You need to get your security groups or some other pieces that I would be using my own. And I will be probably uh, widening out the, my uh, personal data. But notice that in here you have the option to have new hardware like M5 type and C5, uh, which you didn't have before. Very important for you to click here, view information and open this page and print this out. We're going to be doing all these steps. For example, things are different when we're going to be choosing an action. Instead of launching from the website, we're going to be doing launch through EC2. And there are other commands that we will be using along the process here. Right? So going back to the image we're going to click now continue to subscribe and not much else to do here but click continue to configuration so that's the region I'm gonna select and uh, I'm gonna click launch and you will see me doing you know pausing the video because I don't there's some information that I don't want to reveal uh, about the characteristics of the of the details of the of the images I'm going to be installing. And here's that first big difference. In, you need to select here launch through EC2 and notice that the interface changes. So let's click on launch. Now we need to decide what type of hardware do we want to run this onto. And all the things are grayed out, of course, we cannot select, but we should see the C ones in here and below the, the M5 ones. We're going to select the N5.8, uh, this one large, right? So we click uh, Configure Instance Detail. So in here, you need to specify your network, your subnet, and this is going to be assigning public IPs for this. Uh, and this is data that you need to, if you don't know it, ask your AWS administrator for it and he will provide you that. So I'm going to put my information and I'm going to click uh, Add Storage. Okay, so here's the, the main difference with the previous version is that now when we, we can specify the size of the disk we want. Uh, also notice that uh, AWS can encrypt the data address for you. So I'm going to put uh, 2048 in here. Make sure that you know how much this space you're going to need for the foreseeable future. Uh, and you actually specify it in here, right? In this case, because this is a test system, I'm going to delete this image after I'm done doing the video. Uh, when I terminate my instance, I want that data to be deleted because I don't want to pay for that storage. So I selected that option. You may or may not want to select that checkbox. Uh, it's really up to you. The next step is additional. Is that you can add some tags to it, which uh, I'm not going to do. And now we need to configure the security group. This is another area where you need to know what are you going to be doing. Are you going to be creating a new security group? Most likely you will have your own, like I do. So what I'll do in here is I will click on this radio button and I'm going to select the security groups that uh, I'm allowed to use. 
and then I will click review and launch. I'm ready to begin. I'm not going to scroll down, not uh, not to show the information that is uh, pertinent only to my installation. Um, and I'm going to click uh, launch in here, but I'm pausing the video uh, before I do that to cover whatever information I may not want to reveal. I almost forgot that I uh, need to specify where are my my keys stored. I have my keys stored in my local machine. I need to specify the name of the file that I that I will use. I will click here. I acknowledge this, and then this button will become enabled, and I will be able to click on it. Pause in the video until then. So that instance is being launched right now, and to see the details you'll need to click on whatever ID number uh, or image number, whatever you, you, you get in here. So posting the video before I click there. So now at this stage, I would say two, three minutes later, you may need to refresh the, the reload the page to see that change. So, uh, this is going to change from initializing to something like two out of two ready and it becomes a, a, a display in green as well so that tells you that uh, you are ready to launch that instance so I'm going to pause the video until that happens so once you get that two out of two in green you are ready to launch the instance Actually, my bad, you don't need to click here because the, in the instance is already launched. In fact, this is one of the cases where the documentation clearly tells you that what I should have done is this. I'm going to open a terminal, a PuTTY, so in this case it's going to be terminal on this Mac, but it can be a PuTTY session, and I'm going to be doing SSH, and I'm going to put the path to where I have my, my keys, and then easy to user at and then the public IP address, which I'm not revealing in this case because I don't want to get a DDoS, even though this, this machine will be terminated after I'm, uh, I finish this video. Uh, you need to scroll down in, in, the, in one of those pages and there's actually a button for you to click and it goes straight into your clipboard. And that's what you need to put at the end in here. So I'm going to post the video, issue that command and I'll be right back. So I'm ready to do the SSH into that remote session. So I'm already in that remote instance of that machine and I'm ready to start the actual installation process per the instructions. But I want to display the this space that I have now before the process actually completes okay uh, yeah we have the two terabyte of this there so that that should be good now when we go to the instructions they say that you need to run this command which i'm gonna just copy and go there and paste it and start the actual installation this is going to take a while I would say an hour, maybe less, and and you'll know that the process is completed uh, when it asks you to specify what the password is going to be to log in into the UI. So pausing this video until I get that. This is the point where we set the password we're going to be using to log in into the UI. So you need to put a certain level of complexity, numbers, uppercase, lowercase. And if I this get this right, yeah, that's how it's changed. So now I'm gonna use the same public IP that I used to SSH here to go into the browser and log in to my new instance. That's a good sign. It's 
of same certificate and this is your bring your own license all well, that is good and we are done here okay we don't have any offenses because we're not sending any logs to this instance uh, at least yet and that concludes the installation of AWS 741 in a in, uh, in Amazon now the first time I run this before doing the video I let this instance run for a while and I was able to see the use case manager which is one app that uh, after a while uh, if you reload the page you you will actually see it and if we run the lsblk command we see the still the two terabytes uh, allocated but all the different partitions created as a part of the curator installation process